Time to talk about Tullus Hostilius, Rome's third king. After Numa Pompilius, the second Roman king, had died, Rome entered an interregnum, which is where they elected a new king, and this was Tullus Hostilius, the first Roman king born in Rome. Tullus gets elected and becomes king in 673 BCE. And again, I use these dates, but lots of this is pretty much fiction, so don't take it too literally. In any case, one of the first things he does, apparently, is starts giving the poor land. And these were people who had no land previously. And this is seen as two things, two options to it. It could be that this was just a good political savvy thing to do, win, you know, aplomb with the masses. Alternatively, this could have been something he'd already said he'd do if he got elected. We don't know exactly how Roman kings got elected. We just know there was some form of electoral process. So perhaps they he'd bribed them in a way and said, look, if you approve me, I'll make sure you get something, which he did. But there's something about Tullius you need to know. It was Tullius by name and Hostilius by nature. And in the next video, I'll get into just how that manifested. Tullus' first war wasn't with an external tribe or anyone that you might have thought. It was more a sort of civil war because he picked a fight with Alba Longa, which was Rome's sort of parent city. Here you can see Rome and Alba Longa, and it was Alba Longa which was the place where Romulus and Remus had set out from when they came to found a city. So, in a way, mythically, this was their parent city. So, yeah, it was pretty awkward to start a fight with this particular settlement. The Alban king at the time was Metius Fufetius, one of the great names of ancient history and absolutely should have been a character in Cats. He sits down with Tullus and they discuss exactly what the problems are. And it seems to be that, you know, Rome's just got a bit too big for its boots. Dionysus of Halicarnassus paints a fantastic picture. And in it, Metius comes across as awful in every single regard says, Rome's full of immigrants, what are you doing? This is not pure. Oh, and by the way, that whole thing about giving the poor a saying anything, what's that even about? Tullus responds with, well, you know what? Um, we're inspired by Athens to have our own kind of, you know, structure here. And he's alluding to a democracy, of course, which is a bit curious because this is the beginning of the seventh century and Athens doesn't have a democracy for quite a while. Um, so yeah, that's just Dionysus of Halicarnassus doing two things. Firstly, getting something wrong. Can't really blame him for that. But secondly, doing the thing he always does, which is the Greeks are behind everything to do with Rome. He always sees Greeks. That said, they do end up coming to a decision, not on what to do, but how to resolve the whole situation. And what they decide upon is there's going to be a duel between two sets of brothers. And I'll come to that next. Tullus Hostilius, Metius Fufetius, and some horses. Nasty. After the victory against Alba and subjugating them, Tullus made war against Fidne, a nearby settlement. And this is where the Albans get involved and Metius gets involved again. This time he's fighting on the side of Rome. But he gives word to Fidne that he'll abandon Rome on the battlefield at a precise moment and therefore Fidne will win. And obviously there's a bit of revenge there. But Tullus gets wind of it and it fails. The plot doesn't work. Rome wins the day, but he doesn't let on. And he brings Metius forward and he's about to, you know, say thanks and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And in fact, he does the complete opposite and punishes him. Now, I don't know to what extent I can say things on TikTok, but let's just say it involved different parts of the body being attached to chariot teams who then went in different directions. And that was the end of Metius. Messy. Going back to Rome and perhaps nicer things, Tullus built the first Senate House. This was absorbed in later developments of the Senate House, so it's not what you'd see today. And today, in fact, the Santi Luca e Martina Church stands where it once stood. Tullus also expanded the Caelian Hill. That's one of the hills of Rome and allowed people to settle there. But what I'm going to speak about next is where it all went really badly for Tullus and involves, funny enough, something thematically linked to the building you can see here. Tullus Hostilius and that fight between those two sets of brothers. Just to recap, Rome is at war with Alba Longa, its parent city, and they've decided to resolve it all th with a fight or a duel between two sets of three brothers, the Herati on the side of Rome and the Curiati on the side of Alba Longa. And this is a famous painting by David, 
which shows the three brothers having an oath with their father. It's called the Oath of the Harati. Now, the fight doesn't go exactly how you might have thought it did. The sources slightly differ, but it's the same eventuality. After an initial round of fighting, there's one Harati brother left and three or two Kriatis, but they are pretty much injured, whereas the single Harati brother doesn't seem to have been injured in any way. Faced then with the fact that these can be outnumbered by two or three to one, he does that one thing. He runs away. Now, this might sound a bit weird, but it actually kind of makes sense. He wanted to, to split them apart. And so by running away, they all start trying to pursue him. But due to their various states of injury, they can't. And then he comes back and is able to engage with each of them individually and put them down, thus winning the duel and therefore the war for Rome. And it doesn't sound particularly heroic, but then if you've been following any of the videos that I've put up about the Roman kings, you kind of see this motif going all the way through that Rome's a bit sneaky at times. Certainly in this instance, they kind of outfought their opponents as well as outfought them in a way. Anyway, so that's how Rome beat its parent city. But you, this isn't the last you'll hear of Metius and the Albans. They pop up in a bit. Tullus Hostilius, why did it end so badly? To understand where it all went wrong for Tullus, we need to think about Numa, the previous king. When he'd come in, he said about giving Rome its religious infrastructure and not really doing anything involving any kind of war or military. And of course, Tullus was the absolute opposite. And in fact, towards the end of his tenure as king, it all goes very, very wrong, particularly in the context of religion. Neither Livy or Dionysus go into too much detail, but it's really quite clear that there's some sort of problem with the religious observance in Rome at that time, that Tullus was introducing things that the Romans weren't that keen on from a religious perspective. And it manifests itself in a, well, I'll let you judge about his death and see what you think. There are three basic reasons given as to what killed him. The first is that the gods were so annoyed with his impiety that his house was struck by lightning, a flame broke out, the house burnt down, killing him and his family. The second is that he was undertaking those rites I mentioned in, in one of the Numa episodes when I was talking about the altar to Jupiter Elysius, you know, with the lightning being able to read the storms and everything. And he was performing these rites incorrectly, lightning killed him, and he dropped dead. The third is the really crazy one that I don't think anyone could believe. And that is, he was actually killed, politically assassinated, and then his house was burnt down, and those who did it turned around and said, actually, it was uh, struck by lightning, you know, must have been the gods. I mean, I mean that, would, that kind of thing would never happen at Rome, would it? 